Hi everyone, in this video I'll be showing you how to take a Verilog file and then use Cordis to synthesize it into logic. Um, so synthesis is the step Cordis does when it converts your Verilog files or your like block level design files um, into like actual logic gates that can be put onto the FPGA. So you'll start to use this um, in lab 5 when you start working with Verilog or for your reading report where you're asked to synthesize some of the uh, Verilog that's in the book and show the logic gates from that. Cordis actually does this when you compile your designs. So for all the previous labs, it's actually been doing this. It's been like optimizing all the logic um, and deciding how to put it onto the FPGA. You've just not seen this yet. Um, so in this, I'm gonna show you how to take a Verilog file, compile it in Cordis, and then um, see that netlist of logic gates connected together. So uh, you'll need a project. Uh, this can be either be an existing project or in this case I made an empty project. Um, you'll need to make a new file. So you are going to not do a block diagram schematic file, but you're going to instead do either a system Verilog HDL file or Verilog HDL file. I don't think there's a difference between the two, so I'm just going to choose Verilog HDL. Alright, so now we have a new HDL file. and I'm just going to paste in something I already wrote, um, but obviously you're going to be probably copying things from the book for the reading assignment. Um, I would recommend you do not just try to copy and paste. You should probably write them out. This will both give you more practice and also avoid you accidentally pasting any like weird characters that are included in the formatting of the book that might be invisible. So yeah, it's probably just better to type it out. All right, so I have this in here. Um, it's just an AND gate. You can see it's named AND gate. It has an input A and B and an output Z, and then Z is equal to A and B. So this should be valid Verilog. I'm going to go ahead and save it. I'll just name it AND gate. Cool. And now you might be tempted to compile the design, so let's go ahead and do that and see what happens. should pop up with an error, and there you go. It says top level design entity, whatever is undefined. Um, so let's go ahead and see if we can define that to AND gate, apply and OK. Let's try compiling again. For just synthesizing your Verilog, you don't need to assign any pins, so you don't need to worry about the fact that we haven't really defined any inputs or outputs, and you don't need to worry about the pin assigner. All right, now that it's compiled, we should have it also synthesized because Cordis actually synthesizes things. You can see here, one of the steps for compilation is analysis and synthesis. If you go to tools, and then netlist viewers, and then RTL viewer here, click on that, give it a bit to load. You can see, in fact, that it has synthesized my logic into A and B going into an end gate, and the output is Z. Obviously, for the more complicated things, such as the silly function, um, you're going to have slightly more complicated logic. But yeah, this will show you uh, basically how Cordis interpreted your Verilog code. This is pretty useful when you're writing Verilog if you want to see how Cordis is doing it, or um, even for other labs when you're troubleshooting what might be going wrong. Uh, for example, opening the RTL viewer might tell you, oh look, all the inputs you thought were connected actually aren't because they're just floating off in space, for example. So uh, definitely keep the RTL viewer in the back of your pocket as a tool you can use for troubleshooting in the labs. But this is how you would use it to uh, do the synthesis for the reading report. Hopefully that helped.